good morning children welcome back to the social session children uh, we were trying to learn about the uh, formative assessment one revision the first unit indian relief features we have seen so we have classified the indian uh, physical features into six and we were trying to understand about each one of them yesterday we have seen about himalayas and indo gangetic plain uh, let us learn about the deccan plateau that is a peninsular plateau children see peninsular plateau okay is uh, actually divided into three again the major part is the deccan plateau children okay and second one is a malwa plateau and third one is a chota nagpur plateau these are the three important regions this chota nagpur plateau is very rich in minerals this is one of the most important question also chota nagpur plateau is very rich in minerals deccan plateau is very vast one and this deccan plateau is a tilting towards the eastern side as a result of the tilt also many important rivers that take birth in the western ghats they are flowing uh, towards the eastern side and joining into the bay of bengal and uh, this deccan plateau is divided from the northern plains uh, with the help of vindhyas and satpuras vindhyas and satpuras divide uh, this deccan plateau from the northern plains and if you look at the boundaries of this deccan plateau on the eastern side and on the western side on the eastern side you find the eastern ghats and on the western side you find the western ghats and uh, on the southern side the boundary on the southern side you find these uh, eastern ghats and western ghats joining at a place called as nilgiri hills nilgiri hills so the highest peaks in the south india you need to learn under this one so the highest peak in the south india is a uh, annai mudi so this annai mudi is actually located in anna malai hills which is located in kerala so this is the highest peak in south india south india okay what is the highest peak in india children the highest peak in india is kanchanaganga kanchanaganga is the highest peak in himalayas in india actually the highest peak in india is k2 children k2 is the highest peak in india but k2 is not located in himalayas it is located in trans himalayan zone trans himalayan zone this is not himalayas but the central asian mountains which join to the himalayas in the kashmir in the northern part of kashmir from uh, afghanistan is called as a trans himalayan zone jo trans himalayan zone mein hai wo hai k2 and k2 is the highest peak in india what is generally highest peak in the world the highest peak in the world is a mount everest but this mount everest is not located in india it is located in nepal it's located in nepal that's the reason the highest peak in india is k2 the highest peak in india in himalayas is kanchanaganga this is the highest peak in india in himalayas himalayas mein highest hai south india mein jo highest peak hai wo annai mudi and if you look at these are eastern ghats and western ghats join with the help of uh, nilgiris nilgiris and the highest peak in nilgiris is uh, doda betta doda betta doda betta is the highest peak in nilgiris and if you look at aravallis aravallis so aravallis are located to the northern side of uh, deccan plateau okay and this aravallis highest peak is guru shikhar peak Guru Shikhar Peak is the highest one in the Aravallis, and to this uh, Aravallis leeward direction only, rain shadow region only, there is a desert present called as a Thar Desert. Okay, Thar Desert is present towards the leeward direction of the uh, Aravallis, and one of the oldest mountain ranges in India are the Aravallis, and the youngest mountains are the Himalayas. And coming to the uh, Deccan Plateau, Deccan Plateau is also rich in the minerals, as you know that. and its basins especially its uh, river basins if you see godavari krishna basins godavari basin is very rich in the coal and petroleum so many other resources are are, are also available in this uh, river basin areas and uh, coming to the uh, peninsular plateau peninsular plateau doesn't have the rich soils like the uh, deltas children deltas have very rich uh, soil and delta soil uh, gets uh, uh, very frequently renewed because of the rivers bringing lot of silt and fine silt and uh, the humus 
through the rivers and depositing them at the mouth of the sea. So this is how the peninsular plateaus can be understood. If you look at the eastern guards and western, that is the eastern coastal plains and western coastal plains, that is the coastal plains, the next physical feature. The eastern coast and the eastern guards between region is called as the eastern coastal plain. Western guards and western coast between place is called as a western coastal plain. Western coastal plain is very narrow, whereas the eastern coastal plains are very wide. And these eastern coastal plains also are very rich in the agricultural prospects because many delta regions got formed here and there are very wide uh, gaps between the mountain ranges also. But whereas here you find a continuous chain, the Satpura, the uh, what we call the Sahyadri uh, mountain ranges which run from Gujarat to uh, Nilgiris to the Kerala, you see this is a continuous chain and it is very harsh also to reach towards the uh, uh, other side of the mountain. Even if you want to travel to Mumbai, Mumbai is located on the western coast. Am I right? So, ye Mumbai ko jaane ke liye bhi, hum Sahyadri ko cut karte huye chale jana. That means we have to go uh, from the many tunnels in order to reach to the Mumbai. So, this is what we need to understand through the uh, coastal plains, children. In the next class, we will learn about the desert and the uh, islands. Thank you, children.